Good afternoon to each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in once more and praise God that we're just able to still do this, able to still uh, just have another day that we can thank God, we can praise His name and just give Him all the glory and the honor. So before we get on into this tonight and started, just keep praying for our church that, that uh, the direction that we go is God's will. And that we follow God and, and just praise Him and thank Him for how He's made things, being able to come to pass. You know the uh, yeah. the the paving, the Gideons, and how much was able to go forth. And just thank God for it because it's only by Him that we are able to do these things. And it's all His. And man, Brother Jerry had a great message Sunday. If you missed it, shoo, that was that was amazing. But let's just keep remembering the, uh, like our church family, Pastor, Sister Mary Jane. Uh, praise God, this is Tuesday when I'm recording this. So happy birthday, Mary Jane. Happy belated birthday, so that you'll see it tomorrow. So praise God for them. Praise God for them to have another year together. So they're just so, such a blessing to our church. So let's continue to remember Jerry and his church also and uh, remember the the earthquake victims as they're going back in their homes and and um, some of them still getting repaired so praise God that he's still on the throne still working let's remember the the victims that were the victim of the tornado that come through the the uh, Midwest so let's keep remembering those people and keep praying because they yet that, that was rough so but praise God, He's still on the throne. So, and the lost. So, let's let's go to the Lord in prayer before we start. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise Your precious and holy, righteous name, God. I thank You, Father, Lord God, for another day, Father, for another week, God, Father, that we're coming to the midway of the week, God, knowing, Father, what You brought us through, God, and knowing, God, that You're going to see us through the rest of it, Lord God. I praise You and I thank You, Lord God, for the things, God, that You've done, Father, that You've moved, God, and You made ways, Father, that where we seem to be and have no ways, Father. And Lord God, I praise You, God, for the fellowship, Lord God, that we're able to have, God, on Sunday mornings, Lord. And I thank You. God for the things God that you're going to bless and touch Father Lord God I ask you God to touch the Christmas play Lord God that you anoint it Father and build it up just as you would have it to be built Father Lord God for your honor for your glory and your praise Father and I ask you God in each and every way God to touch our pastor sister Mary Jane I ask you God for just your touch around them Father Lord God I thank you God for our church Lord God I pray God from pew to pew Father to anoint Father each and every one God that's needed Father Lord God whatever it may be God that the Holy Ghost anointing Father would touch them God God, whether it may need, they need a help and a pep in their step, God, anoint them, Father. Go down, Father, and just give them a precious touch, Lord. I pray, God, in each and every way you touch this old lost and dying world, God. Father, Lord God, as we go out in it, Father, I pray, God, that the light of yours is shining, Father. Lord God, through us, Lord God, that we be a willing vessel, God, and a candle, God, that can't be lit or can't be hid, Father, and that it all is always lit, Father. I thank you and I praise you, God, for what you've done, Father, and how you're moving, Lord God. Father, as we always pick up that phone to call you, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to be just so faithful, Lord God, not to hang it up when we're done. Lord God, help us, Lord God, to remember, Lord God, that Jesus Christ died on that cross, Lord. And praise you, God, for sending him, Lord God, but he come as our Savior, Lord God. Let us remember, God, what he had done for us, not just because he was just a baby, Lord. But I praise you, Father, for sending in God, and I thank you, God, for that cross, Lord God. By that precious blood, I am saved, Lord, and I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for it. Lord God, move me the ways, move me to the wayside tonight, Father, Lord God, and let you shine. Let you have the glory and honor and praise, God. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. So tonight we'll be in Judges chapter 6, and we'll start in verse 11. So be talking a little bit all about old Gideon here so I'll give you a second to turn there so I've been thinking on this for a long time but I never really knew exactly how it was going to pan out and man it got on me hard Sunday uh, when Jerry was was preaching and praise God he done a great job I'm telling you what, it, it was, 
just getting together fellowship. I mean, point blank fellowship is what we need. Praise God for it. Let's start here in uh, Judges chapter 6, verse 11. It says, And therefore came an angel of the Lord and sat underneath the, uh, an oak, which was in uh, Ophrah, that pertained unto Joaz, the, and excuse me for these words, I may be butchering them a little bit, Abizrat, and his son Gideon thrashed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Medanites. <laughs> Lord God, we ain't, we're we going to give it to you. We ain't going to let this old devil get through. So Let's keep going here in verse 12. And the angels of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did the Lord bring us from Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Mennonites? That is a huge sum of post-2020. Or post-2019 when it all first started. You know, I'm not going to tarry on this because it's really not exactly what I believe God has given us or given me. But, you know, we follow ourselves, me included, I am I'm guilty of falling into that valley. And by falling into that valley that I dig just a little bit deeper and make my own little ditch in it. And unfortunately, that's what gets us. We let uh, us ourselves think that God has left us. And he hasn't. He has a bigger and mightier plan that he's going to work out that you don't even may not even know about. But if we keep in tune with him, let's wait, let's, let's keep going. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the cast or the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. So that's that's just like us today, you know. God, I'm just I'm just one person. I'm the least of the least, and I'm you know I come from I don't I don't have that much money to do this, I don't have that much money to do that, but God desires your fellowship, God desires your faith. It's not that God desires your wallet. He knows we need it. He does. But what he will provide and what he provides for Gideon, there's not a dollar amount in this world that could buy it. Of course, that God would provide the money to make these things. Yes, 100%. But... As far as someone being rich and being able to buy all of this stuff without the help of God, not possible. And in verse 17, it says, And he said unto him, If, I, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou takest with me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I... Come unto thee and bring forth my present, and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. And Gideon went in and made a made ready a kid, and unleavened bread cakes of an alpha of flour. The flesh he put in the basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it until out unto him under the oak and pre presented it. 
And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and lay them upon the rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel said of the Lord, Put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up a fire out of the rock, and consumed the flesh. And the unleavened cakes, when the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. So, praise God. God's already working. God's already showing him these things. You know, if Gideon wasn't didn't allow God to keep moving, what if he what if he had just cut off right there and just said, you know, Lord, I'm, I I can't do it. I can't do it. But he desired a little more God, and yes, the faith was there. And praise God for it. Let's let's skip on down here. And he keeps reasoning with God. You know, he keeps asking, I want to see this, I want to see that, and, and I want to make sure that I am on the right path and I'm listening to the right one. And praise God, he keeps showing. God knows if we're interested in him. God knows that if we're when we're asking, well, Lord, why show me, show me. But, if we ask him to show him, and we're on that direct line and that direct phone call, and we hang up before God's through showing us, then we just shot ourselves in the foot. Let's keep going. In verse 36, in chapter 6 still, And Gideon said unto God, If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, and thou hast said, Behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. So Gideon goes on and does this and says, And God, God provided it. I'm going to skip on down here. I don't want to keep you for that long tonight. But God provided. God made that wool wet and the earth around it completely dry. And Gideon said, okay, now, Lord, just to make sure, and this is in my terms, in my speaking here, just to make sure, Lord, make the earth wet and make the wool dry. You know what God done? He done it. Because Gideon had the faith, but he wanted to know that this was something that God wanted him to do. Let's go on down to Judges chapter 7 and verse 1. And I'll should just be, hopefully just be a one page flip for you. So. Then Jerbal, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Merom in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Least Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim. Now let's stop right there. God says, I'm going to give them no reason to think that men done this. He says, I'm going to give them every reason to thank God and thank me for this being God. Praise God. Because he, you don't have to have, you can have the least of the least and God make a complete way for it. God will pave the path and make the things that are coming under the, even coming under the earth right now. Let me let me go on before I keep on harping on this. In verse 3, Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned, yeah, and there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will 
try them for thee. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and whomsoever excuse me, I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people. And at this point in time, Gideon has tried the spirits per se, and God has shown him self faithful to Gideon the whole time and Gideon is trying to likewise do what God has had for him to do so no more questions and he's taking God and taking the Lord just for his word and what he said to him so he brought down the people unto the water and the Lord said, said unto Gideon every one that lappeth the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth him shall thou sit by himself Likewise, everyone that bowed down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, there were hundred, three hundred men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thy hand, and let all the other people go, every man to his place. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent and retained those three hundred men. And the honest or the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. Now listen for the rest of this. If you do not listen to anything else in this, listen to these last three verses. Because everything is showing up to these last three verses. We've talked about how Gideon has asked God to do these certain things so he'd know that God was talking to him, that was speaking to him, was doing the right thing, that he was on God's path, that he wasn't following the devil or following his own self. He wasn't following man. He picked up that phone and asked God to do something. You know what he done? He kept on that line. He kept staying right there and asking God, he says, send something to me. Show me a way and help me to be able to understand what you want me to do for you. Too many of us being me today asked God that question and he hung up the phone. I've done it recently, to be very honest and blunt with you. We're calling God and saying, Lord, I need you. I'm on my knees. I need help. But we're not waiting on that line. We're not asking God faithfully, Lord, I am opening my ears to you. And I am asking you to show me the way. We're not getting there, church. Because if we was... You wouldn't have saw some of these things by surprise. And I'm talking me including. You know, Jerry talked about even pretty much a lot of things that I talked about a while back. What uh, Brad has, Brother Doug has. Of being, having fellowship. That we don't need to leave that. We don't need to forsake that fellowship because we need it. And we do. But church, when you call on him, don't hang up that phone. Don't cut the phone cord. Don't forget where you left it. Because God will bring you back to it. It won't be as pretty as if you would have just listened, right? If you would have put your ear to that phone and gave God everything and said, Lord, show me, but let me be faithful to be able to hear you. Don't let me just be faithful to ask you. Let me be faithful and humble enough to listen to what you have to say to me. Now, we have a lot of fear going on in this world right now. Fear of things that you can't even see. Listen right here what was told to Gideon mm, right 
Praise God for it. In verse 9, it says, And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down into the house, for I have delivered it unto thy hand. He's made a way. God has made a way for Gideon to be able to complete this battle. But if thou fear, listen, God knows we're human. God knows we fail. That's why God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. That he shed his blood, that we would have a way into heaven, that we'd have a way to get to God, that the veil was rent, and that pathway to him was straightforward. This is why God understood that Gideon had a fear. God understood that Gideon didn't exactly fare up to the hundred percent, didn't fare to that. See, God said, I'll make a way. In verse 10 it says, But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Purah, thy servant, down to the host. Listen to what happens when he gets there with her. Or with his servant. And thou shalt hear what they say. And afterward thou shalt shall thy hands be strengthened to go down into the host. He went down. He then he, then went he down with Pura his servant into the outside of the armed men that were in the host. He kept that phone to his ear. He kept his ear to God and listened. And when he listened, he got there. He made it. The things that God promised him all come to pass. He even had fear. And God removed that fear. Because God's perfect love made perfect love in him. Just as God's word tells us, perfect uh, love casteth out fear. And praise God for his listening. Because when he listened, it says, Afterwards shall thine hands be strengthened. Church, I encourage you to not today, whenever you're reading or listening to this, listen to what God's got for you. Listen when you ask him something. Whatever that something may be, that it be in the will of God. But when you ask, listen. Listen for God to answer. Listen for what he tells you to do. Because if we do, the fear is taken right from us. There's no reason to fear. The enemy has been defeated. Your sins were nailed to that cross and forgot the only one that will ever bring them up to you is that enemy, that devil. That is the only one that will bring them up to you. God's not going to throw you these things in your face. Church, let us listen. Let us keep the phone to our ear that we don't hang up on God. I love each and every one of you. I pray you have a very blessed week. And I pray we all think about Gideon a little bit. Because praise God, they got delivered. So could we.